Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The base of our meditation this morning comes to us from the Gospel, Luke chapter 4. We hear again these select words. And all spoke of him and were amazed at the words that came out of his mouth, the gracious words that came out of his mouth. And he said, Is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, sure, Certainly you will ask me, you will say this parable, Doctor, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard you doing in Capernaum, do also here in your hometown. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It was last year, and the entire city of Houston was talking about it. The Astros had won the World Series, and they were bragging. They were boasting. Boasting and bragging, it's part of our sinful nature, is it not? It's almost as if we're, we're born with it. As a matter of fact, I would probably insist that the reason why football is so big in Texas is because it gives small towns and schools reasons to brag about. You drive down the road through the state of Texas and you come to a town who has won the state championship and usually if it's been recent, there's a huge sign that says state champions. As a matter of fact, if I'd ask you, you who live in Sealy, when Sealy won the state championship in football, you would say the first one was in 1978, 2A state championship. The second one was in... 1994. See, you know this because it's bragging rights, right? It's Sealy bragging rights. And not only that, it wasn't just 94, it was 95 and 96 and 97. That is something to brag about. But let me remind you, that's been over 20 years ago. <laughs> hey, the same thing goes for people in a town. We love to brag about people who grew up in our town, right? Here in Sealy, at the football stadium on one end zone, on the building there is the home of Eric Dickerson. Yes, we, just like the people of Nazareth, love to brag about our hometown and what has come out of it, whether it be a state championship or somebody who is great who grew up in our town. And Nazareth is just like that. They heard of Jesus doing all these great miracles in Capernaum, and they wanted to do the same in their hometown. Can you believe it or not? I would say, in my personal opinion, that if Jesus would have performed, which he didn't, would have performed any miracles in Nazareth, they probably would have put a sign outside their town saying, Home of Jesus of Nazareth, right? Because it was something for them to brag about. But that was not Jesus' purpose. Jesus did not come and that's it. He did not come for people's entertainment. He did not come for people to be astounded and amazed. That was not his purpose. But we of people of sinful nature, we still love to brag. We love to brag about those who are around us. We brag about our town. We brag about the famous person that we know. And yes, we even sometimes brag about ourselves, do we not? We want to see people think that we're awesome, that we're amazing, that we're astounding, that we're fascinating. But Jesus' purpose was not to entertain. Jesus' purpose to come for us was not so that people would go, oh, or what gracious words that come out of his mouth, what great things we can talk about Jesus. That was not Jesus' purpose, was it? Yes, sometimes, just like the Nazarenes, we think we can heal ourselves. We think that we have bragging rights because we are doing so good. It's like the boastful doctor who brags about the patients who walk into his door and walk out, and in a matter of a month or two, they are healed because of what he does. Wow. What an ego. Because that doctor does not realize that he is not the one who heals. 
but it is God above. We think the same thing, do we not, when we brag about ourselves or brag about something that's going on in our lives. We think that we're doing such a great job, but how arrogant we are. We cannot heal ourselves. It is God who heals. And we forget about that, do we not? We're like the lady who walked in the doctor's office and said, doctor, you got to help me. I have a problem. The doctor said, what is your problem? And the lady says, I forget everything. I can, rem- I, can, I can think of things, but about 10 or 20 minutes down the road, I forget it. And I keep doing this over and over again. So doctor, what should I do? And the doctor said, pay in advance. <laughs> we do forget who is the one in charge of our life because we many times think that the entire universe revolves around me, myself, and I, or even our own hometown. We forget there's an entire world outside of us. We forget that there is a God who truly is the one who heals. Isn't it amazing that Jesus says this proverb to the people of his hometown, doctor or physician, heal yourself. For he himself when he comes in the t- into the synagogue to, to read the scripture and then to give a commentary on that scripture, what does he say? He says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Notice what the words were. What did Jesus read? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That has been fulfilled. That was Jesus' purpose, to fulfill, to be a doctor, to heal us. Doctor, heal yourself. That's exactly what Jesus does, is it not? Even though we want to be entertained, even though we want to be amazed, even though we want to boast about who we are, For even himself, as he's on that cross, he doesn't just endure pain. He doesn't just endure suffering and torment. He also receives mocking. And the one thing that is mocked at him is if you are the Christ, if you are the Messiah, come down from that cross. In other words, heal yourself. At the empty tomb, The leaders, the spiritual leaders, the Jewish spiritual leaders are concerned. So what do they do? They want a guard put outside his tomb because they're they're afraid that someone's going to rob his grave and say he is raised from the dead. They want him to heal himself. But yet they're boastful, they're arrogant. They think only of themselves. But Jesus does heal himself. No, he doesn't come down from that cross because his purpose on that cross is to perform the greatest miracle of all time. The miracle of your sins and my sins forgiven. His death upon that cross is a sacrifice that God accepts through his resurrection. Yeah, we may be boastful, we may be arrogant, we may think to ourselves that I can heal myself, look what I can do. But Jesus does heal himself. He is risen from the dead. And he lives for you and for me. And he guides and directs and governs our lives each and every day. Even though we may be looking for something great, he is something great. And his greatness is not found in some miraculous thing that we think is out of the ordinary. No, his greatness is in fact that you and I have been paid for completely by his death and by his resurrection, and we have been baptized into his death and resurrection. It is in the waters of baptism that the doctor does not only heal himself, but he heals us. He makes our eyes that were covered with sin to see who he truly is as our God who loves us, who is gracious to us, who gives up his own son, that we may have everlasting life. That in his death on that cross, because we are baptized into that sacrifice, Jesus grants us forgiveness. Because we've been baptized into his resurrection, we have everlasting life that will come to us. 
and to all those who believe in Jesus Christ. Yes, the great physician, Jesus Christ, is the one who heals us both physically and especially spiritually. The woman comes in to the doctor and she's been having problems for some time and the doctor diagnoses her and then says, okay, this is what we're going to do. I want you to take the green pill with a full glass of water each morning when you wake up. The blue pill at lunchtime, take it with a full glass of water. And the red pill, I want you to take it when you go to bed, again, with a full glass of water. And the lady looks at the doctor and says, well, doc, what is my problem? And he says to her, you haven't been getting enough water. Oftentimes, we as Christians forget about the water of baptism that has been granted to us in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. Let us remember that we are baptized Christians. We are baptized into his death, into his resurrection, that God always grants us life and salvation. Notice, when you boast about yourself, when you boast about your hometown, when you boast about something upon this earth, you are always boasting about something that is in the past or the recent past. I know a high school that built a $300,000 press box, a double-decker press box, a beautiful press box. And on that press box, they hung a huge banner that said, Texas State Football Champions 1990. I remind you, that was over 25 years ago. For us, in the same way, we can brag about ourselves, we can brag about our, our f football team, we can fr brag about our baseball team, we can brag about things and people in our town, but we're still bragging about the past. But in Jesus, let us boast and brag about him. Because when we boast in the Lord, we are boasting not about the past only, but at our future. For Jesus Christ is your future and my future, because in him, we have forgiveness and we have life. Doctor, heal yourself. And that is exactly what Jesus did for you and for me, that we may have healing, physically and spiritually. Amen.